What is going on, sexy lovers? How y'all doing out there? Happy Friday. Happy Freak On Friday. I'm bringing the Freak On Friday back today with a uh, special episode of the Sex Mechanic Podcast on a Friday. Um, of course, I am your host, The Sex Mechanic, a.k.a. Jeans and Benoit, a.k.a. Mr. Born to Explore, a.k.a. Confident Creator, a.k.a. I Did It My Way, a.k.a. The Exception. And um, I'm glad to have you here. Absolutely glad and thrilled to have you here. I'm waving to everybody who just joined in. TU Fit, welcome cuz. Um, Airly Favela, welcome as well. Hello. And uh, welcome to episode number 45 of the Sex Mechanic Podcast, where we talk about sex, dating, situationships, and relationships as well. And um, yeah, I'm glad to be back with you all. Of course, I usually do this on Wednesdays, but I'm trying out new days to see which days work best for everybody. So hopefully I get some feedback about today as well. If today works better than Wednesdays for y'all. So yeah. Um, hey, what's going on? Um, so yeah, what's going on, Chef Ebony Spearman? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, episode number 45 today. We are talking about new sexual goals that I have, uh, coming up for the year. Um, I guess not for the year. We're like a quarter through the year now, um, or a third through the year. But, um, I got some new sexual goals and I'm happy to have gotten insight from different people, you know, maybe some past lovers, um, or just one past lover. And, uh, and also just thinking about stuff as well. And just like, just coming up with stuff in my own head. So we'll get into that. Uh, you see that today I have on my good Dick energy shirt where you can go to my bio and, uh, check out my store where I have this merchandise and also other merchandise as well. Um, I got a little something for everybody, so definitely check that out and see what may, you know, come across that you may like and uh, you might want to order. So check that out for sure. But um, yeah, we're back on this Friday. Freak on Friday, baby. Um, yeah, so we talk about sexual goals, right? I've got some sexual goals that I want to accomplish this year. And when I say sexual goals, I don't mean necessarily like stuff on a bucket list that I want to cross out, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about bucket list items like uh, a foursome or, um, I don't know, having sex like on a plane or something like that. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking more like the way I want to approach sex moving forward um, that I have not been doing, you know? And it's really funny because I've thought for this, lo like for a long time that I was like kind of like, a, a really open-minded person about sex, which I still feel like I am pretty open-minded, but I realized that I could be more open-minded and I could definitely experience sex in a more free spirited way than I have been. So I'll give you some examples and we'll go into what exactly I'm talking about because you're probably thinking like, what does he mean more free spirited? So uh, for one, I want to open up the possibilities of how and whom I engage sexually with. And let me explain that. So over the past few years, I would say, I've been very particular with, you know, who I engage with sexually. Um, I'm not all the way out there like that. Like I maybe average, I average about two to three sexual partners a year, but there are some years where you know it's yeah it's, it's usually right on the average though to be honest with you but that doesn't mean that those are the only opportunities that come my way or the only situations where that can go down like a lot of times I don't say a lot of times but sometimes I am you know just turning it down because it just doesn't seem like the right fit or the right situation so I, I do want to be more open about um who I engage sexually with because again I've been very picky uh, picky meaning like I haven't really messed around with a lot of uh, one night stand situations um, it's just not something that I've I've ever really been drawn to I guess but I think the reason for that too is that I don't know 
actually. I don't know the reason why for one night stands. Like, I think there's just this this stigma to it that, you know, it makes you look a certain way if you just want to have, uh, you know, a night of pleasure with somebody and that be it and not have anything more. So I think that's just stuck with me and that's something that I'd like to, you know, release and let go of because if she and I both have an understanding that, you know, we're just enjoying each other's company for the night and that's what it is, then that's what it is. Um, so yeah, I think in that sense, I've been a little prudish around, you know, sexual exploration with, with people that I don't really know. So what's going on, High Life Zuda? Welcome. Um, so I think I want to open up with that, you know, a little bit more. Uh, one of the ways I want to do that too is by exploring sex clubs. I've talked about this on past episodes that I was actually supposed to check one out. I've been to one before, but I want to check another one out and see how the experience is going by myself or going with uh, you know a small group of friends. But checking out a sex club because a sex club has a different vibe from you know a regular club. So if you go to a regular club, it's more like, especially here in the US, I know people could be watching from different parts of the country. So here in the US, the way it goes is like, the, the guys mostly are there to pick up women and the women are kinda, for the most part, waiting for the guy they want to come talk to them or to come engage with them, right? Most of the time, uh, yeah, oh, well, Chef Ebony Spearman says, I never heard of a sex, a sex club. Um, they call them swingers clubs or, uh, I forgot the other name for them, but they don't typically call them sex clubs, but they're clubs where you can go in, you go, you pay uh, an amount to get in. Uh, usually you have a membership as well. You could have a membership. Some places require the memberships, other places don't. And you go in there and you meet people and there are spaces and just an environment where not necessarily just sex, but, you know, uh, physical intimacy is uh, is is open and it's uh, it's it's invited uh, with consent. So that's kind of what one of those clubs is like. But it's a club where you'll see a lot of couples and you'll see, you know, sometimes married couples, and that's why they refer to it sometimes as a swingers club. Um, so yeah, it's definitely out there, and it's out there in probably every major city in the U.S. for sure. I know they have them in Miami. Uh, they have them in South Florida, like in terms of Broward County too. They've got them, um, the one I went to was in San Francisco, so I know they have them over there. I understand with some research that they have them in Seattle as well. Um, probably got them in Portland. Probably got them here in San Diego too, to be honest with you. And I'll be looking into that really soon and I'll let y'all know. But yeah, you can pretty much find it in every major city, a club that you can go to and engage with other people. And sex may occur, it may not. But the option for that is open at that type of uh, club or that type of environment. It, where in Miami? It's a good question. I can get back to you on that and let you know the places that I've heard of, the places that people have told me about. I think I've only heard of a couple. One of them being, uh, was it Velvet or something like that? I don't want to lie to you. So let me do some more research and I'll get back to you and let you know what the ones are uh, in, in South Florida for sure. Because I know there's one in Broward and I know there's one in Miami that, that are pretty popular. But um, but yeah, I think that'll be a way that I can open that open my mind up and not feel so, I don't know, like so in my head in terms of what happens after this first time, after this first experience. Like, what are what what are we going to be, I guess, you know? And, and is it okay if this is the only time, you know? Like, I think for me, a lot of times I prefer an ongoing situation that way I don't have to think about sex when I want it you know like I don't have to think about where I'm gonna get it from if I have a group of women that I'm already dealing with over-the-top catering what's going on welcome 
uh, if I have a group of women that I'm already dealing with, you know, let's say a group of three or four, it's what we like to call a roster. Um, and women be having rosters too. But uh, if I have a group of people that I know I could, you know, call on uh, when, when I'm feeling, you know, sexually aroused or my desire is there, that's a lot easier to deal with. And I like to be more comfortable with the people that I am I'm, uh, dealing with. <laughs> Chef Ebony Spearman says, you're very handsome, mister. I appreciate you. Thank you. You're going to have me over here blushing on live, man. But uh, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. But um, yeah, so I tend to go for, you know, situations that are a lot more comfortable. And that's also, I think, why I don't start a lot of new or I don't have a lot of like one night stands, too, is because I like to be have a level of like comfort with the people that I'm having sex with. And that's not always easy to get when you just meet somebody for the first time, you know, like you might have a vibe, but you, you're not going to have the vibe with somebody that you've connected with over time and that you've built some kind of either friendship or just some type of relationship with, you know, even if it's a more casual relationship where you've talked on the phone a few times, but I'm going to be more open about that. And I'm going to allow myself to you know, just go with the flow a little bit more when it comes to that and not try to plan so much ahead uh, what this can mean and what it's going to turn into or, or not turn into uh, what the other person might think about it and how their feelings are. I'm going to be honest still because it is my it's my inclination to be honest. Like, that's just who I am. It's a lot easier for me to be honest and open about shit than it is to omit information or try to keep things away from people. So I'm definitely gonna be honest in the beginning, but maybe, you know, maybe I'll just be honest. Like in terms of saying like right now, I am just having fun and exploring sex for what it is. Now, in reality, there's more to that. But when I meet people, uh, unless I feel something very special right off the bat, that's what I'm gonna say because I don't wanna necessarily give any kind of other impressions. But that's kind of how I'll just, you know, move on for the time being. So opening my mind up to things like one night stands and, and, and going to a sex club are going to be kind of different. Going to a sex, a sex club again will be kind of different. Saying a sex, uh, sex club is really hard. I have a lisp. So when I say sex, it sounds like I'm saying sets, sets club. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna say a swingers club. Uh, swingers club. Uh, over the top catering says, "Did you plan to only show the top two words <laughs> on your shirt during your life?" <laughs> that was not the plan, sir. That was not the plan at all. And actually, when I first came in, I already showed the whole shirt. Okay, so you just missed that part. Um, <laughs> stupid as hell. <laughs> yeah, the shirt has a lot more to it. You know, it's it's a whole phrase. It's not just, you know, the first two lines. I appreciate you pointing that out. That way I can show more of the shirt as I'm speaking. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'll open up in that sense and see what happens there. Because even going to a swingers club has been something that I was... I'm glad I got the experience, but I never really had, I had a little bit of an urge to go back, but never a, a, a big urge to go back because I didn't know how I would be in that setting. You know, like you're in front of a whole bunch of random ass people and depend on how the people look in terms of, uh, in terms of the groups of people that are in there. Uh, when I went in San Francisco, it was mostly uh, people that did not look like me. And so there was a weird feeling about that and being in a kind of like in a sexual space where a lot of people are looking at me, uh, you know, a black man and maybe looking at me in a certain way that was kind of, hmm, I don't know. I didn't know how to feel about it. So uh, maybe go into a space that's a little bit more uh, diverse would be something that I that I start off with. And also going in with a more open mind and not not having somebody with me. Like I was I, I was there with a friend who at the time, you know, we were what's going on, Daniel Danielish Kanyan. Um 
I was there with a friend who, you know, we, we, we messed around or whatever at the time. So that made things a little, a little weird, I guess you could say a little different for the first experience. It was kind of like, it was a lot. The people having sex and being naked and shit, like in front of me, that was nothing. Like that part, I, I mean, that's, that's whatever. Like seeing naked people, is just a body to me. Um, and seeing people have sex is not that big a deal either. I've been somewhat desensitized, you know, through my, you know, education as a sexologist to not really be freaked out by seeing people have sex. But, um, the part of the parts about it that were kind of did take some getting used to was, uh, eyes being on you and not necessarily being there to perform. You just there to kind of like check things out. But it seemed like, you know, people were looking in my direction, wanting to see what I was going to do or something, you know? So, and that could have just been in my mind too, but that's what it felt like. So I look forward to going again and uh, really seeing and exploring, meeting people in that way. Because also in that environment, you don't have the same expectations in terms of, you know, what things are going to be or turn out to be. After you leave that club, Unless you exchange numbers, you may never see those people again in your life unless you go back to that club. So it's not the same type of pressure. It's not the same type of feeling of, oh, I have to keep this going somehow. You might end up meeting couples, like I said before. And so there may not be that expectation for anything. Uh, there may not be the expectation for something long lasting or something that continues on beyond that club. So I think that'll take a lot of the pressure off in terms of me feeling like I wonder what's going to happen after this and I wonder if how she feels about what's going to happen after this is the same as how I feel what's going to happen after this and that will take a lot of uh, of stress off me and, and off my mind. I like to just be very free in my thinking when I engage in sex and that's when sex is the best for me and I, I'd like to believe that's when it's the best for the other person as well because I can give myself fully when I'm not thinking about uh, what the situation means. So that's one of the things I want to do. The other thing I want to do is experiencing sex with less or no expectations around it and that kind of uh, hello sweetest girl 8605 uh, welcome we're just talking about sexual goals or my sexual goals and what I'm trying to accomplish soon. Um, Chef Ebony Spearman says, did you participate at the club? I did not. So the story behind that is I had actually been sexually intimate with the person I had came there with earlier before we went to the club. So I was pretty much good for the day in terms of, you know, getting into it. Uh, or getting into any kind of sexual activity. Also, I didn't see anybody at the club that made me feel, I don't know, made me feel like I wanted to do anything more. Like I wasn't aroused enough. And I really was going there to just like see what it was like, not necessarily to participate. So maybe that was it too, was mindset wise, I wasn't really going to do anything. I was really just going to see and scout the place out and see what the environment was like. So, uh, oh, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that, sweetest girl, 8605. Thank you. So, yeah, so I didn't do anything in the club, but I feel like if I was to go again, with consent, of course, <laughs> um, I could see myself definitely getting into it the next time and, and, you know, getting some type of, you know, physical contact going in some way. So... With that, I was going to say that leads me to my next, the next thing that I want to, you know, kind of break through and experience is sex with less or no expectations around it. And the reason why I say that is because, like I said earlier in my first point, a lot of times I've tried to plan out what the interaction is going to mean and what it's going to turn out to be. And I would shy away from one night stands because I didn't want to hurt people or, you know, like put myself in a position where I look like a, like an asshole so I kind of stayed away from one night stand situations and um, just kind of and also because I felt more comfortable with people when I built some type of rapport and a connection as opposed to meeting them that same night. And then, you know, 
getting into something sexual. So I'll be more open about that as well. I'm gonna have less expectations going in, less thoughts about where this is gonna be afterwards while still being honest in the beginning and being straight up in the beginning and letting people know straight up. Like I'm honestly in a place where I'm just having fun and I'm exploring my sexuality more in a non-committed way. And I guess people can take that how they're going to take it. But what that means translation wise is that I'm just having a good time and I'm not thinking about what this is beyond tonight. We could figure that out, you know what I'm saying, like later on. But I will tell you right now that I'm not necessarily planning for it ahead because I would usually plan ahead and trying to analyze and and try to figure things out and plan things out. And that's one of my biggest things is that I, I overanalyze sometimes. I overanalyze a lot. I'm not even going to lie to you. I overanalyze a lot of different things. And it's kind of like a gift and a curse sometimes. So in this aspect, when it comes to sex and enjoying sex in, in the best way that I can, I am going to refrain from doing that the best that I can. I can't make any promises that I'm going to be perfect with it because this is like kind of who I am. But... I'll do my best and I, I think I can make some some real strides and at least put myself in situations where I feel more comfortable having having sex or sexual interactions um, on short notice, I guess you could say, without, you know, building up the same type of rapport or whatever. So, OK, the third thing that I have a goal of doing sexually, and this one might surprise some people but maybe won't surprise others, is uh, I want to get back to a place where I'm improving on and being an overachiever when it comes to sex. I have a confession to make. I've been somewhat of a lazy lover, you know, in the last however many years. I'm going to say maybe last five years, maybe. I've become like really on like cruise control almost. And not always, like I'll usually, you know, start off pretty strong, but then at some point I'll just feel like, eh, all right, if I know exactly what it takes to get the person to where they're trying to go, then I'll just help you get there. And I won't put any extra effort in terms of trying to blow your mind. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I just had this conversation with somebody actually, and I was telling her how, how, I know what I'm capable of when I'm, you know, when I'm overachieving, but I just get to a place where it's not even like that I'm comfortable. It's more like, I don't know if I get bored or I don't think it's boredom. I think honestly, I lost at some point, some years ago, I lost that desire to, you better stop complimenting me now. All right, Chef Ebony Spearman. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful smile, mister. I appreciate that. Um... I was going to say, I lost that desire to be like one of the best that women have ever had. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to have that, that desire and that used to motivate me. That used to be that thing that pushed me. Like I want to be one of the best. I want to be in your top three. I used to, when I was a lot younger, say I want to be your top. But then I realized ah, being a top sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> so... I'll take top three, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll take top three. I'll still have to put some work in, but I feel like I could get away with that more consistently than trying to be somebody's best ever, uh, future, past, and present. So that used to motivate and drive me, though. But the problem with that is that that also made me very goal-oriented when it came to sex. And sex wasn't, wasn't as intimate. It wasn't as connected. It wasn't as passionate because it was more about, all right, put my finger this way, um, put my tongue over there, do this, do that. It was more technical than anything. And with the technical type of sex, you know, I've even had somebody say like, yo, it was kind of um, robotic in a sense. And I could understand that. And I actually didn't enjoy it as much either. Like it was more of, I was going in there to complete a task and to do a job. And even though it was a job that I enjoyed, I didn't enjoy it as much as I do now. You know, like I, I enjoyed it a lot better once I let that go and that was no longer my motivation. Like I was able to really just like take sex in 
for the experience and for the sensations of it. So even though I won't be able to get back to that place because I don't want to, I do want to get back to a place where I'm driven and I want to be better. You know, like I think anybody can probably agree that things that you enjoy doing, you actually want to be good at them. Think about something that you like in terms of like a sport that you like playing. Uh, let's say you like playing pickup softball or pickup basketball or tennis on the weekends or something like that. It's a lot more fun when you're good at it. <laughs> and it's a lot more fun when, you know, like you're winning or you're, I want to say winning, but it's a lot more fun when you have success doing whatever you're trying to do. So I think that's where it applies to sex in this case for me. I would enjoy sex more if um, I'm better at it as well. I'm not saying I'm, you know, not not good because I, I do believe I'm, I'm I'm good in that department. But I know I could get better in some areas, and I know that I could be more consistent in some areas. Like the knowledge is there, but I just don't apply it all the time because I again I'd be I'd be kind of lazy with it. Parenting fly, what's going on? Welcome for uh, welcome to uh, the podcast. So I do want to be more consistent and I do want to be putting more effort more of the time than I have up to this point, I guess you could say. So that's something that I definitely want to get back to is trying to be in the top three. That's not going to motivate me, but that's going to push me to do a little bit more in terms of effort and take it a little bit more seriously, I guess you could say. Because for now, I think I can honestly admit that over the past, uh, I'll say same past few years, like sex is decreasingly or increasingly been uh, not as satisfying, you know, like from a casual standpoint, like when it's casual sex over the last however many years, man, it's just been less and less gratifying to have casual sex it's just been like okay that was good and it just does not last the feeling of you know how good the experience was usually doesn't last that long now when i'm feeling somebody or i got you know like feelings for someone that's a different story the sex just kind of like gets better and better it just builds up but when it's just a casual thing i guess i don't know maybe i get bored or something but when it's casual, it just doesn't last. The feeling of goodness and the, the feeling of satisfaction just does not last to me. L, mental black woman, welcome. Thank you for joining the podcast. I'm sorry, I thought I had missed a letter or, or a rest of your name in there. Um, so I think too, I want, if I'm going to get back into this space where I'm opening myself up to more casual encounters, then I want them to be more enjoyable, obviously. Like, I don't want them to be casual encounters that I, at the end of it, feel like that was kind of a waste of my time or, yeah, that was cool. And then I'm just like over it, you know? So that's another reason why I feel like getting back to the basics and, and really working on the art of sexual, um, sexual pleasure is something that I want to get back to. And honestly, too, it feels really good to assist somebody else in feeling really good. So instead of just like making somebody feel really good, you know, maybe I'll give myself some some new uh, some new goals, you know, sexually when I'm engaging. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's see. Because again, that's something I used to do. You know, I used to be very competitive when it came to sex. Uh, let me see how many orgasms you can get. Um, let me see, you know, if I get the, the legs to shake a certain way or whatever, you know, like that used to be, uh, again, my motivation. I don't want it to drive and motivate me, but I do want to add a little bit of that element in there again so that I feel like I'm, uh, you know, giving my best and also getting my best or getting the best from others as well. Because what I have realized is Sex is going to be whatever I bring into it in terms of my level of passion, my level of desire. So when I have really high desire and really high passion, it's going to be a really good experience for both of us. Um, but then there's also the 
there's also the aspect of my ambition and my desire and then there's her you know let's say level of of experience and or her level of uh of of sexual awareness or 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 awareness of her body and how how it goes and when those are both at like really high levels then you have like mind-blowing sex um when i say both i mean my ambition her awareness you know of her body when those are at really high levels then you have the mind-blowing experience if they're kind of like both in the middle uh, my ambition is like in the middle her awareness is kind of in the middle it'll be really good you know like it'll be a really good experience and if both of them are kind of like my ambition is not that high uh, and she may not have that much awareness then it'll be maybe okay you know, it may be not even that great. So uh, getting back to a place where my ambition to to be great at sex is high again is something I look forward to and something that I am open to, you know, exploring again like I used to. Does anybody have any comments to add to this? I had some comments and questions earlier, but maybe, you know, People have more comments or questions moving forward or right now based on what I was talking about, which I got for me. <laughs> Something else that I had thought of yesterday that I also mentioned to somebody when I was talking to him was that I thought back and asked myself when was the last time that I got the whole like leg shake and like the, 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 the big O experience from somebody while going down on them and I couldn't I couldn't remember the last time it's probably been years not probably it's most likely been years since that's you know since that's happened and, you know, people have enjoyed it, but people also aren't saying like, oh, you know, this is the best I've gotten. And again, that's not going to motivate me, but it's something that does kind of push me like, OK, I'd like to see that again. You know, like I wouldn't mind seeing the legs shake and and the, you know, legs, you know, clenching me to where I can't really breathe from uh, from the body kind of. Uh, the the body getting like the muscles getting spasmed and stuff like that like I I miss that yeah I'd like to see that again so those are things that kind of push me as well to say all right maybe it's time for me to explore some of that and then not only that again you want to be good at the things that you enjoy doing nobody wants to be doing something and feel like you know they could be a lot better or they could be doing a lot better but they're not putting the effort in or they're not uh, doing the things that they know they should be doing to be, you know, at that at that level. So I think that's just where I'm at right now in life is <clears throat> a lot of growth and improvement, self-improvement on different levels. So to me, that's just another level that I feel like I can improve on. I could be better on and uh, I'm going to. I look forward to it. And now that I'll be, I guess, practicing more because I'm about to be out here. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'll give me more of an opportunity too to, you know, to, to get better at it and, and, and try some different things out as well because I'm all about kind of like being a mad scientist when it comes to um, a lot of things, but sex as well. Um, sex, I definitely like to explore different methods and see what can work better than others? Sweetest girl 8605 says, how do you balance still being goal oriented and not being robotic with the enjoyment? I guess I'm about to find out. <laughs> uh, honestly, though, I think it's um, I think it really comes down to why you're engaging in the act. You know, I, for me, at least that's that's how I feel about it. Like, are you doing it for the for for the for the for the gratification of somebody else saying oh my god that was 
amazing, blah, blah. Like, I don't even look for that at the end anymore. I, I mean, early on, yeah, I wanted to hear that. Like, I wanted to know, like, this was... You, you could barely think right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't even operate because I put it down like that. But more recently in life, it's more like, I just want to know that you had a good time, but I don't need to hear it from you. Like, you don't need to say, oh, I had a good time. Like, I don't I don't need to hear that. I, I, I listen to your body, and your body can tell me if you're enjoying yourself or not. Um, so I think the balance is really just not letting that be your motivation, if, if, yeah, not, not even making it a goal so much, but making it more of, you know, just an extra little, sex is supposed to be fun anyway. So to me, that's just like an added game within the fun, you know, like, okay, let's see if I could get her to feel this kind of, you know, or have this kind of reaction or feel this kind of way, you know, like it's, it's all about fun and pleasure. And so for me, wanting to increase the pleasure for your partner or help them experience pleasure in a different way or in a on a higher level i think that's just something you can make fun you know that's something that you could really put in there and, and and have a good time with it and not necessarily have to feel like you are uh being goal oriented and also that shouldn't be the that shouldn't be the determining factor on whether you had a good time within the experience or not because if the only way you have a good time is if the other person comes out, you know, saying, whoo, you were, you know, that was the best I ever had, then you're always going to be searching for that. And if you don't get it, you're never going to really experience or enjoy sex the way that you can if you weren't looking for that. So definitely don't be looking for that type of reaction. Just go in there and, and, and have a good time. See how much fun you can have. It's basically what it comes down to. And to me, the more pleasure it's got to be more fun the more pleasure you have, right? So, and that's for both of us, you know, like whoever is involved, like it's got to be more fun if there's more pleasure involved. So that's just kind of like, you know, an added, okay, let's see if this can get more pleasurable. Let's see if we could, we could take it up a notch, take it up another notch, another notch, and just keep taking it up a notch. Because I truly believe too that when it comes to sex, like the pleasure is unlimited in terms of what you can experience. So... You could keep taking it up a notch and, and, and never fall off, you know, if if both of the people involved are in the right space and, and their bodies are still able to do that as well. Sweetest girl said or sweetest girl 8605 says agree. OK, I appreciate you agreeing. And uh, Chef Ebony Spearman was laughing at me. I don't know which part she was laughing at, but um I had like a little rant right there, so I don't know which part of it she thought was funny, but <laughs> apparently some part of it was was really funny. But um, yeah, man, sex is about to be a good time again. Again, I've I, again, outside of being into somebody, sex has become less and less interesting and fun. But when I'm into somebody, it's a different story. Like that's that's a good time all the time or whatever or most of the time at least so uh but sex is about to be fun on a casual level again and another thing i didn't mention too was that something else that was blocking or something that was kind of like my way of thinking that would maybe blocking uh, my ability to really enjoy sex from a very free spirited place is the fact that i felt like I wouldn't be able to find my life partner if I'm out here having a good time and just, you know, uh, you know, having sexual relations, you know, all over the place, then I won't be able to find that one that, you know, that I'm on the way to finding because that person I already believe is, is in the works We're we're on our paths to meet each other regardless. But for whatever reason, even though I believe that I still felt like I should be available uh, completely available and void of any kind of sexual connections at the time so that when we did get together, it would be less messy. But at the end of the day, being that I'm not going into these situations with uh, with kind of like expectation and, and, and trying to make them last, if they last, they last. If they don't, they don't. Like that's how I'm looking at it now. 
and I'm being a lot more open to whatever the situation ends up being as opposed to uh, wanting it to go a certain way or wanting it to be a certain way. So I'm not holding on to the fact that my life partner is, is on the way to me and I'm on the way to her. You know what I'm saying? Like we are on each other's paths regardless whether I'm fucking with other people or not. Um, so I'm just not worried about it now. I'm actually even more confident that <clears throat> me having a good time sexually, uh, me improving myself sexually as well, all of this is just preparing for her anyway. So what are we even talking about? She will appreciate it greatly at the end of it when, when we do meet. So I'm not worried about it. Or if we've already met, when we actually connect, she'll appreciate it. So I ain't worried about it. But yeah, that's all I got right now. Um, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm trying to go. And I look forward to doing some research, like I said, and, uh, to see what's here in San Diego. What kind of, uh, what type of vibes are in San Diego? Since this is where I'm at right now. <clears throat> and of course, I will report back whenever I do find something and I actually go to a club like that. I will let you all know how it was. I'll let you know what the experience was like and uh, try to give like a review for those who might be curious. <clears throat> and I also get back to the person that asked me about the places in Miami. I got you. I'll let you know which one it is. I'll go back to my phone. Somebody I think text me the info and I just, uh, I just don't remember right now. So I'll let you know, I got you. But any other questions, any other comments? Any of y'all have some sexual goals that you'd like to share? Uh, I'm sure people got sexual goals, but any that you'd like to share with uh, with the congregation right now? <laughs> so weird doing live or doing IG live while I'm at home this home in San Diego. I haven't done this since last year. I've done an IG Live in this spot. All right, Chef Ebony Spearman says, nope. All right, fair enough. If, uh, if nobody else has anything, then I think I am going to call that the conclusion of this fun and highly transparent episode, as I usually do though. I usually share a lot with you because I feel like being honest can help somebody else out. You know, somebody else might be watching this and might get something out of it because I was open and honest. It might feel like maybe they can talk to somebody about something that maybe they weren't ready to talk to somebody about. Or, you know, at least if they could even relate, you know, and, and that's enough, hopefully, to help somebody get through something. So I'll keep being honest, keep being open. Keep being transparent because that's who the fuck I am. All right. So I'll talk to you all very soon. I will let you know ahead of time, obviously, what day I'm going to be recording on. But I, I kind of like this Friday thing. I'm feeling it. I like the fact that I could bring my phone anywhere in the world and record. All I need is Wi-Fi. So I might keep this going on Fridays even if I'm traveling and uh, you know, I'll give you guys a heads up obviously. So thank you all for joining. I appreciate you all. And I will catch you on the next episode of the Sex Mechanic Podcast. Peace.